We sat down and spoke with Star Trek Picard showrunner, Terry Metalis, to discuss the details of the upcoming third season. Of course, we had to talk to him about the new USS Enterprise F, but we also asked some deep questions about what's coming up and what we can expect in Season 3, coming in less than 50 days on February 16th, 2023. Enjoy what we're calling a casual conversation with Terry. Let us know your thoughts in the comment section below, but in the meantime, enjoy the video. Well, I'm going to jump straight into it. Terry, thank you so much for joining us today here on Trek Central. It's been a pleasure to actually get you on the show, but how are you doing? Uh, it's my pleasure to be here. Uh, I'm good. I'm good. I'm just uh, I'm busy, but good. I can't complain. Fantastic. But one thing I'm immediately going to say to you is thank you for bringing the Enterprise F into Star Trek Picard, because as soon as I saw the Emma trailer, I think part of me died of excitement because I've been banging on about that ship and fans of our channel will know for about three to four years now that I've wanted that Odyssey class. It's still an Odyssey class in Star Trek Picard. And uh, yeah, can you tell us anything about it? You know, even that glimpse in the trailer. Yeah, I mean, uh, it was uh, something we wanted to do from the beginning. Um, I would say... I, I would caution fans who are like, that's the season. It's The season does not take place on the Enterprise F. It's not uh, an omnipresent ship. Um, it is um, important, I will say, but it is not it is not the focus of the season. So Enterprise F fans will definitely have to um, be okay with that. But I think they'll, I think they'll be rewarded. I think the fact that it's just like it's canon now, it's properly actually canon. Because so Star Trek Online introduced it first. Um, right. We've had it in a few other places. And we had Picard was commanding the Verity in like his little comic book series. So now yeah. it's actually there. Like it's the best thing we're going to get like for now. So I think Enterprise F fans are going to just love yeah, the fact I mean, we've got it there. <laughs> it's one of those tough things where like there, ha there, there has been so much canon. And you want to honor it for all the people who stuck with with it you know the online games in the novels too that's why we included uh the luna class uh as part of the canon um before it was on lower decks we were we were luna classing it up um uh and then the you know but it's also like you want to talk about some of the novels where like Worf was captain of the enterprise e at one point yeah and so you start to have long conversations with Michael Dorn, who had no idea that that oh, was... Wait, a, oh. Yeah. And he's like, well, I do not believe I was the captain. I'm like, <laughs> no, you were. So how do we want to deal with it? And we nod to things and sort of keep certain things open um, uh, to interpretation for things like deep can and stuff like, like specifically that time period. You'll learn a little bit more, but you won't learn so much to erase uh, an entire book series or anything <laughs> like that. It's definitely a juggling game, isn't it? Of having to manage, like, Star Trek is so vast now and has been. Like, it's so much to, like, work between the lines of. Yeah, uh, it, it's, it's a constant juggle. And, you know, you're, you, again, you have to, you have to, it needs to come from character and story first. Like, what's the best version of what we're going to tell um and then you go from there about how many people are you going to piss off if, if you diverge from those things um but I, I think we we found the right line of of where it should be that's fantastic i know the whole captain wharf thing has been something people have been going on about because his rank in the show is something people have been questioning as well. Is he a captain? Is he something else? Because he a big conversation that you've probably heard as well always comes up when we talk about Worf and Captain is, yeah, oh, he, he can't be because of Deep Space Nine. It's always mentioned in every comment section. So he holds the rank of captain clearly because mm -hmm. you can see it on his, on his, uh, on his uniform. But um, what he's doing... I think will be a bit more of a surprise uh is, is a little less expected than um he shows up on the bridge of their own starship it's funny like you get a lot of fans tweeting you're like oh well jordy will have his own ship crusher will have her own ship or if we'll have their own ship and you're like no i don't think it quite works that you don't <laughs> just get a ship and, and people's lives were different um i think w the thing that was important to us was these actors 
have gone to more conventions and spoken to more fans than you and I will ever can possibly imagine. So it needed to start with them. You know, it was, it was a conversation where we were like, here's what we think your story is. Here's where we think your place in the universe is. Let's talk about it because you know your character so well. Um, and so that was key to... Um, key to really finding everything and finding legitimacy like i think we're where and how you find jordy is like perfect like pitch perfect but it comes in you know it was an idea with ours but we sat with lavar and we're like blah 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 blah, blah. And he's like oh my god yes that's exactly what <laughs> so it's fun it, it was it was a lot of fun and what hard. do you think of like the fan theories that are going around? Because I bet you've seen some where people have been tweeting at you, but we've heard like theories about Geordie having his own challenger again, or still being Utopia, for example. Like there's fan theories everywhere. What, what do you think of them? Like has anybody cracked anything certain yet that you can say? Or, um, yeah, I mean there there are things that are are definitely definitely cracked, um, but also not at all. Like nowhere, nowhere near what it ends up being um so yeah yeah no it's 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 interesting it's it's very interesting i think the what's hard about that is what's hard with all these franchises like if i think about star wars or like the sequel series part of me i'm exhausted um I, it, you're eight hours ahead of me and you're not yawning um Bad thing I, is I took an antihistamine tablet before this, which is also a sleeping pill. So oh, you're gonna you're <laughs> gonna go down in minutes. All right, I'll try not to be boring. No, but no you have in your head your own version of what happened in these characters, hmm. right? So it get, it's hard to sit down and then see someone else's interpretation of you know uh, of what those characters are. I always reference the prequel, the the sequel Star Wars trilogy. Not because I have any particular issue with with its quality. I actually think there's a lot of really good things in those as well. Um, but I, I do think it some it takes a minute sometimes to get around to. Oh, Leia and Han had a divorce. Like, you know what I mean? Like for 25 years after Return of the Jedi, that was not a thought that was going through. But it's unexpected and interesting, dramatic territory. So it's a it's a tough thing. It's a tough thing. I think also like it's good to have things that are different because if we just had a season that was straight from book A, we'd already know of a story. And why that can be interesting sometimes, you've always got to change things to subvert viewer expectations. And I think that's yeah. something that's really important to be done, really. Right. It, yeah. I mean, subvert, but I always believe in giving the fans what they want in a way they didn't see coming, I think is always a good. That's a good quote. I wouldn't, I, you know, uh, you know, I don't think, again, not everybody's going to get everything they want for the holidays coming out of this. I mean, they, like some people are like, they should just all be back. It should be TNG season eight and they're back on the Enterprise and they're, uh, they're, they're doing a thing. Of the, it's, it's not, it's not that it's still a serialized story. Um, but it does wrap up a lot of arcs that are were surprisingly um I, I don't want to say but but yes it continues you know, mentioned before like it's um you know no character is safe essentially and this is like the final story um some and like for the adventure of all for the tng crew even though the tng crew was it uh the new york panel where it was like oh we could always come back for a movie <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I think, look, it's Star, it's Star Trek and Leonard Nimoy died and came back the next movie. So I think uh, I think everyone always thinks in Star Trek that that might be a way to do something. Um, so I will say that, that maybe somebody <laughs> on that panel, one or two, might have been projecting as a possibility of something, but you never know. <laughs> Star Trek stars lying on a panel? Hmm. <laughs> yeah, exactly, right. Breaking NDAs here, John, for freaks again. Um, let's talk about the Stargazer, actually, because we love sure. our ships here on the channel. Um, that was introduced in Season 2, and obviously the Stargazer set is being used for the new Titan, uh, which we'll talk about in just a minute as well. But the Stargazer, um, yeah. John obviously had a hand in bringing about end of Season 2 and being sort of the new, you know, the Picard ship, essentially, I guess we can call it as. Where did the idea come from? Did you just think, 
Yes, I absolutely wanted to do a stargazer, or was there something else that made you think that one? Yeah, it was always the stargazer. Uh, uh, early on, we, we, we talked about, um, we knew at, at least enough that we, we needed to get back on a starship by season three, so we needed to build those sets. Um, and uh, as far as what ship, I just said the stargazer would make would make the most poetic sense. Um, and uh, brought on Dave Blass, and then, you know, and then I drove everyone crazy with the design of that thing for the next <laughs> two months, like I do with almost every starship. Um, because it was tough, uh, you know, the, like the nacelles are different. The nacelles are a throwback to um, the TOS movies, you know, a little bit. But mixed with John Eves throws a little uh, sassafras in there, and so does Doug Drexler. And so we got, we, we tried to get, you know, everybody back in. Um, to have have a piece of it so so yeah that was that was a thing i mean we went through so many so many different styles of it um before landing on that before landing on all these ships my god the shrike in season three yes that's one that's very interesting or dave blast i mean no less than maybe 1300 different ships by the time I, I hope one day, like I know, I'm not sure if this is up to you or like other Paramount people, that there's more art books coming out sometime in yeah. the near future. Because I, I think fans, particularly Star Trek fans, out of all the online fans right now, love seeing the behind the scenes aspect and really appreciate yeah. the creatives. And I was going to say, just so you mentioned um, Doug Drexler and everybody else there, like although we're reuniting the TNG cast and those are our legends, we're also reuniting the behind the scenes legends for the card season three. Like you know, Doug Drexler being back again and John E's is something like. Who saw that coming? Like, <laughs> uh, there was there was one time I got on a call for season three it was a Zoom, and it was Doug, uh, Mike, and Denise Akuda, uh, John Eves, um, uh, I think Greg was on there. Who else was there? Somebody else to, anyway, it was just it was a it was a full reunion, and you know the last time I I I saw any of these people a lot of them i was you know a messenger i was the the guy who would come they would take care of and feed me because i was a production assistant <laughs> and i just wanted to see all the cool ships and john Eves and i would exchange soundtracks and jerry we were huge jerry goldsmith fans and things like that so it was necessary i think too is we wanted this really to this season to really feel like it was a continuation of though i guess you know where we left off with the feature films and and that creative team um it, and so uh, you know you need those you need those people every one of those people to make it authentic you mentioned also um jerry goldsmith there and the soundtrack obviously um you've been sharing snippets of the soundtrack recently on social yeah. media and keeping us poised for all of that one um can you tell us any more about that? Like, does it pay homage to different parts of Star Trek? Is it purely next yeah. gen? Is it a bit of TOS in there, maybe? Like, what can we yes. expect from that? Yes. Yes. <laughs> all, all, all the, uh, I I'm so excited about uh, about the the score. In fact, I just I had a meeting today oh. um, about a vinyl release that is the most Ooh. beautiful vinyl I've ever seen. Like the, I mean, you're just it. It's gonna be, it's it's gonna be pretty amazing. Yeah, the score. Um, we, you know, we set out. Early on, I, I I wanted it to sound, and this is tough. Every episode to sound like a a Star Trek movie. I wanted it to sound like Jerry Goldsmith. I wanted the James Horner uh, aspect of it all, but that's nearly impossible to do with television. Uh, but I I I called Stephen Barton, who is a longtime friend and um, who was my composer in Twelve Monkeys, and I was like, what if we just did what What would Jerry do? What would what would Horner do? What what if that was our North Star? Could we do it? And he's like, fuck it, we're gonna try. <laughs> and it 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 it's there's new themes that I think are gonna be there's a theme for the Titan that I think is just one of the great Star Trek. Is that the bit hinted in the trailer or is that a different one? Because we hear a yeah, little bit hear, in the trailer. You hear a few notes of it at the end of the yeah. every time. Is there like specific character themes as well because that's something common of media lately is like characters have their own unique theme because of that are we expecting any of that if you can tell us uh there is another theme tied to a, a group of characters okay. there's a kind of um yeah that's all i i, I want to say <laughs> that like 
when it's first introduced yeah i can't there's nothing i can tell you about it so <laughs> just <but> yes, yes. <laughs> yeah the answer is is yes you know wharf wharf is very much has a theme you know goldsmith brought back the klingon theme from tmp mm. so we uh, we do and we also bring back a little of horner's klingon oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> yeah the, the classic <laughs> klingon <laughs> In fact, I will say maybe when you first see Worf, you might hear a little bit more of that Horner thing. Ooh, um, okay. And so, uh, you know, it, we, we were just kids in a candy store. But, you know, it's, you know, you don't want to be, we use the next gen theme when it's earned and not just plastered across it. But when, it, when like, when you want to hear it, yeah. you know. I think it's impactful, that theme. Like, it's, it connects with so many fans. You've got to use it. I like the right yeah. moment. Like if you plast every it sort of loses the value, I think, as a iconic theme. So you want to use it yeah. when and where it matters. Yeah. And what's what's amazing about what Jerry did was there's like 90 different arrangements of it. Oh. So you can use it scary, you can use it slow and beautiful and a reunion of friends. You if you're not hearing that theme, I don't know what you're doing, what show you're making, <laughs> right? Um, it'd be like Indiana Jones showing up and you know they play back in black or something uh, you know what i mean like it would be weird I think we've all seen it edit somewhere on youtube <laughs> yeah, i bet there probably is. uh but you know it it's uh it was it was incredible to do um we we ended up at, at steven wrote about five hours of music um before he was like we still have we had let's see five was five yeah we had five more two of them were a giant movie the last two episodes are a giant movie and he's like i we just need help so we brought in this other guy uh, frederick weedman uh freddie is incredible and uh yeah just wait you guys are yeah they tag team the last two it's great nice. it's incredible Let's talk about the Titan before we break another NDA. The Titan, the new cloud or the new starship. This one revealed there blew people's minds. I remember when we were watching the trailer, we typed to our team and like spread across the globe. And I remember myself with caps lock on going, it's the Titan, like <laughs> it's in Earth Space Dock, or what well, it looks like Earth Space Dock. Where did the idea for the Titan come about? Like, why this ship out of interest? Why not reuse the Stargazer if you can tell us that one? Um, the Stargazer, um, it felt tied to season two in the way that it was a Rios, you know, mm. it was Rios taking on that legacy. Um, uh, and it was, it, it just felt like it's, it's story had kind of been told. Um, and there is a plot reason uh, for the Titan in which is it's, it's, it's tied to Riker um, and Riker is very prominent in this season uh so it was primarily about that and then the redesign of, of the titan um you know when we first started talking about it, it 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 felt like we had a big discussion about the future of starships and where they were going um with all the designers and um we we saw some luna class redesigns and they just started, they kind of had too much of that downward thing happening. And then anytime we went up with the nacelles, people would get a little bit more excited. Um, and then once we started to go back about like, you know, what are really some of the iconic um, imagery, knowing that we were gonna do a lot of space battles, it really is that constitution class um, you know, even Enterprise E is just enough of an, you know, a, a, a throwback to that upward way. So we were like, well, okay, let's go back into that direction. And then we saw um, um, Bill Krause's design. And I was like, man, <laughs> I, I really dig that half shell front. And then we all talked about, well, what if Starfleet was incorporating retro designs, but up upgrading them in, in 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 ways, you know, in the ways that the new the Mustangs, you know, the the cars of today are all all have they don't need to look like that. Um, and, and you know, and Gene Roddenberry was like, the ships can kind of look like whatever they want with the technology. So there is some car, you know what I mean? Some designer yeah. with Starfleet who's like. Let's go back. And then we, you know, we wanted it to make logical sense. So we, we worked with Doug and Mike and all that and, and whatnot and, and came up with what we, what you see there as the Titan. 
but we also the ship is an underdog it's like a fast mm. underdog so we kind of liked the constitution class kind of felt a lot like that in those films and yeah and definitely two through six and we're like let's let's get a little of that in there and so Oh, that is the impression we sort of get like based off the main trailer we've got which uh, reveals the new villain and we see the shrike it almost makes it look like the titan is a bit of an underdog where it's taken by surprise of this new villain and gets beaten up there and the trailer a little bit in that sort of first like, a glimpse there so it's we're already getting that vibe and impression but i'm sure it can turn around at some point with all these veteran characters and hopefully a punch back it uh it, they are in a bad situation but speaking of the villain um amanda plummer Yes. How is it like bringing her on board? Because I think you teased us for ages and ages and ages. Like this amazing actress who's, play, who's not been in Star Trek before, always wanted to work with, is playing with Bill and Vol. And we went through a million IMDb lists and still didn't show up the store. What was it like working with Amanda? Incredible. It was in, it, it was incredible. And I, I, I hope to do it again and again and again. Um, she was the only one we ever really wanted for the role. Um, I, I have... Uh, I've just been an Amanda Plummer fan it's going back to like Fisher King or when she was on Broadway and did Agnes of God I mean she's just not to mention Pulp Fiction she steals the beginning and the end of that movie entirely because she's so amazing I've just always wanted to work with her um, and then I, I what did I, I saw her again on um, the Cuckoo's Nest spinoff Ratchet and I was just like she's still amazing and when we came in, we we had an idea for this alien captain. Um, we knew we wanted them to feel like a classic Star Trek villain, but but brand new. We're getting those Khan vibes almost a little bit, and obviously Alex Kurtzman said that I know, once I, twice. I, I, it's not. I think you hear the word vengeance, and people go, mm. "Oh, it's Khan!" You know, like, <laughs> has you don't even. It's not even. Whatever. Yeah. You'll you'll see um but it's no, not con i mean certainly con in the way of con or Kruge or uh or her father general chang and so um they're larger than life they're they're incredible actors who are chewing it up and that felt fun it felt like you know we haven't really seen that in a while um and that's what we're gonna do fantastic like yeah. that introduction as well like so one thing I love of the trailer and like credits to the editor and yourself and whoever put that trailer together, like it introduces us to the world of Picard season three, yet leaves us with so many more questions about who's this, why are we doing this, what's the motivations here and here and here. Like oh, I've said to this to our like team here, like although we've now got a glimpse to the story of Picard season three, we still don't really have a clue what's really in a good way, like what's actually going on because we're mesmerized by all this new content that's being thrown at us. We know we're going out there in search of Beverly, but the rest of it's your own guess, really, which is good, I think. Yeah, I, I wish, uh, boy, I wish fans were louder about that. I, 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 look, it's whenever you're cutting a trailer or you're promoting a thing, the first thing they say to you is, um, uh, spoilers are good. They're actually good. We've done the research. Fans like spoilers. I'm like, well, yeah, they like spoilers, but then they might not like it later when they get the product mm -hmm. because you rob them of, of a discovery. So it's it, it's been and they've been actually been Paramount's been wonderful um, and so secret hideout about let's really talk about what we're releasing because so much of the, about the the way the season unfolds is better left as a surprise when you see it you're like oh that's what this is oh that's what this is oh that's about blah 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 you know so we're trying to trying to withhold that as much as possible getting harder now as we get closer and closer to release of all the... <laughs> it gets hard it gets hard but we're almost <laughs> there i mean it's it, it's it'll... not it's not long is it no i mean the holidays are gonna blaze by and then you're right you're in spinning distance it's just past january as well which is like a bit slower but like once you get the january blues it away we're straight into february and right. like there'll be obviously i think when the pr starts as well there'll be a lot to talk about probably going through january into february for interviews and various things so we'll get yeah. bits of tires over until episode one lands which yeah. i think will keep fans definitely engaged right right i'm very much looking forward to because we all want that extra bit of info going around the the next trailer yeah it's oh yeah mm, okay so um we spoke before about sort of like beverly um 
you know, Gates McFadden is returning as Dr. Beverly Crusher. We see yep. her immediately in the trailer there. Um, her story arc, how is that sort of like, can you tell us a bit about that? I've, I've tried to ask like a spoiler question, but can you tell us about Dr. Crusher? Uh, I can tell you a little bit about um, Beverly. Um, she's not on, uh, she's not an admiral or I think she was an admiral on all good things, right? I think so. No, I think she's think... captain. Is she captain, just captain, captain of the... Crush, of... Or captain the card, wasn't it? Yeah. Of the, begins with a P. Past year. Uh, past year. Past year. Past year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right. She's not, she's not that. Um, we wanted to, certainly she was a doctor. We knew that she would always be a doctor, but um, we thought more about the the world of Star Trek and the universe. And, you know, if it was with Star Wars, you're like, what's in the outer rim? Like what, what I mean, surely Starfleet has not helped every world. Um, and so would there be a sort of Doctors Without Borders that would be, um, you know, her ship is very much, it's clearly like a repurposed old Federation ship that she's is the called, um, Elos or Elos, isn't it? How do you pronounce it? The Elios. Hmm. Um, and it's sort of been like painted on the US, like it was <laughs> another kind of ship um, okay. that she's managed to buy or use or trade for. Uh, um, and she is, uh, yeah, that's where she is at the moment. Awesome. I'm, I'm looking forward to that. The scene of like Riker and Picard discovering, or like walking around uh, the ship, which looks to be her ship, we don't know. That's really interesting. And we see her ship getting boarded by these mysterious aliens in the first, um, first trailer, which I've quizzed you about theories on before as well. Are they related to the villain, can you tell us? Or are they just somebody else entirely? They're related. Yeah, because also we see the mysterious starships like docking onto the Elios uh -huh. as well. Which yeah. are they new or like a design we've seen familiar? Because you might see there's a big debate in the fandom right now about those ships being very similar to Star Trek Online ones. If you can add there, there, I, 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 everybody <laughs> asking all the right mm. questions. Which is yeah, okay. <laughs> That's a good answer. We'll, we'll take it back. Uh, you know what I mean? And it, it's not like. Oh, 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 anytime, but it's funny too. Anytime uh, any of these questions come up, I'll be like, huh, I'm pretty sure we, we this was part of the backstory and I'll call Dave Blast. And he's like, yeah, it was because such and such, such and such, and there was an auction block and they both, these blah, 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 and like to disguise them. I'm like, okay, good. We thought this out. Okay, good. I just want to make sure. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, there's, there's reasons, reasons. Okay. I think you mentioned before, like, you know, um, <clears throat> excuse me, not all species or some species, we use other species ships for various means and things like that. Uh, I think you mentioned that a while back, so that's yeah. potentially yeah. a clue. That is pretty cool. Potentially, potentially a clue, yeah. And go back to the villain. Um, so it's, it's is it Videk or Videk? How, how do you pronounce it? Yeah. Yeah. Videk. Okay, one of the other ones. <laughs> um, her mission there, like we see buildings getting destroyed, we see the Titan blowing up. Like, is it against Picard? Is it against the Federation? Like, is is it specifically to Picard, or is there a wider sort of story going on? And he's just caught in the middle. Like, where are we looking at that? She's certainly aware of, of um, who Admiral Jean-Luc Picard is and knows enough ab about him. But, um, yeah, she's she's got a particular agenda that uh, she feels yeah. is right. And when you hear it, you may be like, hmm, that's a good point. Fair enough. <laughs> that's a good point. Or villains who you can relate to. That's 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 a good topic. I mean, we, we spoke about Andor before we started this and how it makes you know the Empire look interesting to start with. You're almost going on oh, second four. It's not so, then they do something you're like, oh, no, no, never mind. They're really organized. <laughs> yeah. They're really fascist, efficient, fascist. really efficient. Yeah, they work and they're very efficient. I, I will watch uniforms. any one of the uh, um ES the uh, ESB, the Intel intelligence bureau in ISB, Empire. yeah. ISB, I will watch those scenes twice. Oh yeah. I just, I'm like, this is, I can't believe somebody made this. It's so good. Um, I mean, she's pretty wicked, okay. but um, um, but in a delightful way. You'll, you'll, she's, yeah, but has her own fears as well. I don't want, to, I'm like, I'm, I'm telling, talking to her. I want to go back to the tights in a second. Um, obviously, it's a reuse of a Stargazer set from season two, but do yeah. we see more of the internals? We, we spent time on the Stargazer season two, but uh, we're just on the bridge. Are we seeing other areas of the ship? 
Yeah, I think you see in the trailer, don't you see the transporter and sick bay? I don't know. Yeah, if sick bay I, there. I think we'll see a bit of engineering where a certain other character called Law appears. Is that engineering or another deck of a ship, maybe? Uh, that is a specific part of the ship I can't tell you about. Oh, okay. But um, but yeah, so, you're you're in the hmm. in, in the world. Um, but it is uh, yes, you do see more. We we are, the bridge is um certainly different in the way that it feels a bit more um like an operating ship it's a little darker you know, like some of the graphics are different the okay. the two chairs have these have different controls and and we you know by the way i there, we don't feel bad about that at all because we always felt like starfleet had bridge modules that went across various yeah. ships to alter um but yeah it is essentially with some some tweaks what we used on the stargazer but lit very differently it's okay. looking fantastic because you've shown some tweets like the transporter pad like one of the ones i love is the phaser racks um we've seen now before we're like the type is it 12 phases the long ones i think it's like 12. yeah yeah i can't remember the top of it, but the rifle versions that's looking fantastic do we or see no. a ready room is my question like are we gonna see picard in a ready room maybe uh Got not, yeah, the, the observation lounge plays heavily okay uh, there's a lot of a lot of uh back to the spirit of sitting around a table going what the fuck do we do <laughs> you know? um and i because i mean it's just it's a it's a part of star trek that mm. i just love but we're there's there's a fair amount of that but no there's not really a, a captain's ready room but who what makes you think he's the captain Wow, yeah, that, we, yeah, we spoke about that one before, haven't we? And I'm not sure if we can touch on that one too much, <laughs> but you've already you've already touched online quite well, a Well, <laughs> can we talk about that one, or should we leave it alone for a minute? Um, it depends when this is released. Let's leave it alone for a minute. Okay. <laughs> uh, we'll come back to it another day. But you said the captain was someone who, like very interesting, and we should pay attention to um, because you know they've got a great performance. So we can at least say that, can't we? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Um, you've mentioned before, like one of the trailer scenes back to the title shows Picard in someone's quarters as well, doesn't it? One of the scenes Picard stood there. So that's another area of a ship we're going to see. It is. Yes. You'll see a, a, a few different folks in the quarters. Oh so, um, uh, yeah. So one big question we get from the fandom, by the way, is, and I think it's both a question and also a concern. Obviously all these characters are returning. Some fear they are just popping back for one episode. And that's done with it. Like, what's your answer to that? Are we like building the crews we going on? Are they all turning up in the first five minutes? Like, is it more of a journey along through the season to like collect the crew? Um, it's definitely not someone pops in for, for an episode and takes off. There are some characters like that, but they're not our core legacy group. They all have multiple episodes, but it um, it is a, a journey, meaning you're not by the end of episode one, it's not them all sitting down and being like, we're back. <laughs> Cut the credit. It, it's you get, um, we make sure everybody's story is told along, along the way and it's earned, you know what I mean? It needed to be earned. Each character needed to be earned in their own way rather than just, Hey, let's get together and stop a baddie. Didn't feel like the right <laughs> thing. That's, that's very like classic Trek in a way, but like it doesn't really fit these characters in a sense. Which one? With the the whole let's just get the crew together and go yeah, let's beat somebody it. up. Yeah. I mean, it reminds me of Star Trek Five in a way. Let's get the crew together and go deal with some pirates. Well, I, it, Seth, Alex said it uh, brilliantly uh, on, at the New York Comic Con. Was uh, everybody was like, if you were going to do one last next gen movie, two hours isn't enough. It has to be at least three hours to really gear up and tell everybody's story. Way better if you have ten. <laughs> so uh, it's kind of it's kind of like that. I, I not in the way that you, we just took a three-hour movie and stretched it out. It was no, we designed many stories to be part of this thing. So yeah, fantastic. I know one of the things I'm looking forward to is uh, more Seven of Nine and um raffi so jerry ryan and michelle heard obviously they're working with our legacy characters um in this you know we see seven of nine who now appears to be a full commander on board the titan is that her can you tell if that's her permanent station on the titan or is she just there for 
Yeah, for the fun of it. That is her permanent station yeah. at the moment. She is first officer of the Titan. Very nice. She looks good in red. Like Jerry Ryan rocks that uniform really well. It, it, it was pretty great to finally get her in that uniform. Um, her, her and Rafi are um, on separate story paths for a while. Okay. People were very, um, very surprised by the sort of like forming of a relationship in season one of Picard at the very end, and then obviously it developed in season two. Is it something we'll see more of in season three, or is that maybe put to the side in favor of another story? Um. It is addressed, but it is not the focus. Okay. Um, and it's addressed in maybe like my most favorite, one of my most favorite <laughs> moments in the season. Um, but it is not, uh, it's it's so dire, nobody has time for any of that. Yeah, of course. And there are, there's a lot of reasons. Again, it, it, it's a question. It, that's better suited for one that's all over. I could be like, this was the design for yeah. for these characters. Come back in six months and ask that one again. <laughs> yeah, I'll happily explain that. <laughs> um, so looking at other aspects of the sort of like trailer and sort of dissecting it a bit, you know, we see everyone in their different locations. Um, location wise, Chateau Picard is shown in the first trailer. Picard's writing his letters there. Is that sort of was that just a teaser trailer for sake of bringing back the old crew, or is that tying into the story we'll find ourselves? Oh, in? That, that's all footage. Perfect from from the from the show itself. Yeah. Have you revealed who the letter's being written to yet? Because I thought I read something somewhere, but I'm not sure if you've said anything about that. Uh, it, it's not a story point. Okay. Yeah, it's uh, it is. I'm, I heard letters to Jordy, but I can't remember if that's. It, I don't remember yeah, that. It, it, it is to Jordy. Yes, okay. but it's not. Not a story point like, oh, is it a wedding invitation? That's wedding. what I first thought. <laughs> I mean, no, it's not like that. It, it's a, a much simpler just. How you uh, doing? <laughs> well, there, it's more than that. It's a correspondence you'll see, but, um, but yeah, that one's to to Jordy. But that's all in the, that's all in the, in the, in the movie. Awesome. Um, we spoke about it a minute ago. Law is back. He's somehow on board with Titan. But before we learn about that. Was that always your idea for Brent Spiner to play Lord? Was there a discussion of like who he should play? How are we getting Brent back for the 60th time as another character? Um, how did that come about, if you can tell us? Uh, I mean, I don't know that you could do a next-gen reunion without Brent playing an android. You, yeah. you, you know, it, like, <laughs> if you want to do it right, you got to do it right. Um, so, uh, we had an idea for, for, for this, this arc. And, um, I called Brent because, uh, you know, the first question is why would Laura look old, you know, and we have, we have, we have a reason we, it all is all and makes sense. When you hear it, you're like, ah, it would make sense. So, um, uh, and then, you know, Brent, Brent's phenomenal. He's a phenomenal creator and writer on on his own. And, uh, we went back and forth on, and it's this and it's this and it's this, and he gets very involved with the dialogue and will help pitch his own lines that are pretty fantastic. Um, and so it, it's a kind of a, you know, even though you're under the gun, it's kind of a dream come true to collaborate with someone who you have long admired. And I mean, I mean, I was a kid, you know, you know the, these were my childhood heroes. Uh, but also you got to be the one to say yes or no. It's, mm. it's, a, it's very, a hard choice. Yeah. Very strange thing because I should not be saying no to any one of those. <laughs> but you got to. Um, it must and, be like playing in a toy box, like in a sense for yourself, like to grow up with these characters, to grow up with the Star Trek universe, and now build the Star Trek universe. Like you must have sat back a few times, maybe on the bridge or in the captain's chair, and thought, "Damn, this is pretty impressive." Uh, uh, he, when it was all over, I did. <laughs> when you had time, mostly too scared of of screwing it up, to um, too you terrified. There was a lot of pressure then. Oh, absolutely. 
I mean, it's a thing that I love. I, I, like, I, I didn't want to get it wrong because I wanted to be able to like what we were doing. If this is the last time we'll ever see all these characters together, which it could very well be, it's it it has to do a lot of very difficult things. Yeah. Um, it needs to hit on nostalgia. It needs to feel like it's in the voice of those characters that people have long admired for 35 years. But it also needs to tread new ground. Um, and that's the scary part um, to, 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 to gel those things and to make some very permanent decisions about the second I say Beverly Crusher joined a doctor without borders that's in an encyclopedia now <laughs> it's true <laughs> but, yeah, you, know, already it, read the book. <laughs> you know and then people will start well, okay well well she left starfleet and then people will start doing all that right so um every decision was was you know we just we would vet and vet um over and over to make sure we were telling the right thing it's a personal question for you, by the way. Obviously, um, Star Trek Picard Season 1 was by a fantastic Michael Shabon with a bunch of creatives. Season 2, you came aboard. How did that happen? Like, I don't, I don't know how showrunner jobs work, but I don't, doubt it pops up on Indeed.com looking for Star Trek showrunner and you apply. But like, how did it come about out of interest? Um, I had... So when I finished my show, 12 Monkeys, um, I sent <laughs> I sent an email to my agent because uh, was Discovery had, had come out and been on the air. Um, and I knew they were developing new Star Trek. And so the, the subject line was Star, and then in the body was Trek. And that was it. And he calls me. He's like, what's this weird emo moment? <laughs> Get me into Star Trek. I I, I don't know. Uh, I, I remember the day I was sitting with my editor, Drew, who is on Picard now, too. And I Sorry. my agent called, and I was like, "Just we want, I want to do Star Trek. So uh, he called Secret Hideout a billion times. And then um, I think it was Heather uh, or Caden over there had seen 12 Monkeys and brought me in. And they at the time, they were developing, I don't know what, if I'm even allowed to talk about it. Something. <laughs> the Nick Meyer, the Nick Meyer con. Uh, idea. Yes, which is now a podcast series coming out next year, I think. And, um, it was possible that that could be a series that went on the air. And they were looking for a showrunner and i was like let me tell you about con blah, 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 blah. <laughs> uh and then they're like we're off i'm like you're doing another show and they're like yeah we're doing picard and i was like oh <laughs> my floor. god i'm like i would kill to do that and they're like we've been on we've been working on it for a while now and i was like okay anything ever happens with that call me it looked like con was gonna go um okay. and they were gonna hire me i met akiva um and then it didn't and picard went and i was like well keep me in mind uh and then at the towards the end of season of, of shooting season one when they're getting ready for season two um akiva called me and it was like hey uh i was working on another show for cbs at the time he said come meet me in the morning he's said look we're, we want to do two more seasons of picard i was like that's amazing and he's like michael uh wants to uh, it's not wants to is it wrote this the cavalier and clay the, those yeah. amazing ones. um and was very much in development on that uh and so we would have an opening he's like would you co-run it with me um and then season three's you know will be yours because i just keep had many other things going so he's um, moved to strange new worlds now which is the pike series so i imagine that's world. probably what he jumped to and he's got a brilliant show coming out on apple which oh very nice my god when you hear about it. so um the uh so that was that was that was essentially that i came in um to a mini room that they had put together already with uh michael shaban was in it um kirsten who was part of season one and a, a lot of writers from season one of picard and we started we just started all jumping in on on many ideas um some of which i don't know if i can talk about because they're really cool um on the, we, on the blackboard for another day <laughs> there, was, there was there was yeah there was a few versions of 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 season two all incorporating q and time travel but meant very different um and so that was that and then we started making it and then i had you know i wrote the first two um and then someone had to go 
start working on season three because it shoots the day after. She shot back to back, wasn't it? Yeah. So um, Akiva um, ran the show and uh, I moved over to season three and that was that. It was crazy. (laughs) And the rest is history. (laughs) Interesting to know about the Khan series though, like that would, do you ever think back like if that became a thing, like how, you know, we think we always do in life, we think what could have been, like, do you think maybe what would have happened to that one? Um, I do. I, I actually have never, uh, I haven't had the opportunity to read exactly what they were going to do. They wanted to know if I was interested in it. And the thing that I had said was I thought it would be really cool to set it in the 90s. Um, and, that would have been the eugenics wars, wouldn't it? Yeah, the meet Khan, the birth of Khan and his, you know, was he, who was he? Like, would you actually maybe look at some of the eugenics wars and go, oh, that guy started with actually, you know, some really interesting good ideas before mm. it got corrupt. Um, and they all, they all thought that was really cool. Um, but that was the thing. And then, then they were like, well, it can't be the nineties. Um, paramount was uh very is very specific but they really want star trek to feel like our future yeah like well we have kind of had some i don't know if that quite counts although even when i was watching the original series the 90s felt like i don't know if the eugenics war would happen in the 90s but i guess it's always a debate over isn't it like when would it actually it's like world war three you know when would that take place like there's a big strangely world established up recently and like fill the gaps there's always sort of debating thing of like Mm, okay <laughs> oh i heard about that i i didn't see it uh, i i think it's an episode one we had rationalized that because of world war three records were records were off as to when things happened mm. that there was a um an emp that shorted out every chip on the planet and, and things so it now was explain why like Zephyr Cochran's like his warp like insulation was ba- bare bones essentially like it was a shack and a shed essentially they were knocked back to the stone age right so yeah. we were actually the EMP wiped out everything and now um you know you would have to rely on paper books at the uh, of the time about you know who knows and how many were are there even today it we were we 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 spent a day talking about this you know that's the other thing that gets interesting about even the most negative fans like they don't know their canon. They don't know. It's like, guys, I wish that was an answer that we don't know canon. The, the problem is get 10 cooks in the room and decide on what's canon and become something else. There's something I was going to ask. Ah, yes. James Callis in season two playing yeah. Picard's father-ish. Was that something you had an opinion on or was that Akiva? Yeah. His idea? How did that come back? Because I was blown. Like, I'm a big fan of Battlestar Galactica personally. I was, you know, Gaius Baltar. I yeah. was amazed when he turned up. At first, I thought he was playing a time agent. We all had these theories. How did that come about? Uh, well, uh, James played a pivotal role in my last show, 12 Monkeys. Um, and, um, yeah, uh, uh, pivotal. Uh, and inc- he was incredible and delivered one of his best performances ever um, as this uh, rogue time traveler. Um, and uh, he... You know, we shot in Prague. You know, we just got really got to know each other, and I love him. Any any chance I can, I you know, to get him uh, on anything, I put him on MacGyver when I did that little stint on MacGyver for CBS. <laughs> um, I, I'm like, we're bringing James Cal. People are like, you were what? I'm like, we're giving him a four episode <laughs> arc, and we did, and he was great in that too. And Jerry Ryan played the dog. But I digress. But the uh, so that was that. I you know, in retrospect, I. Uh, I was, uh, I well, I thought he was great and, and a really interesting take on who Picard's father might be. I, you know, I, I felt like we kind of burned him and I couldn't bring him back for season three. There was no way. I reckon you'd do so great as a Starfleet captain or something. Like, I'd love to see yeah. him doing, I mean, totally. it's another show in the future. We can reuse actors. We've done it before. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> I, I, I would love to see more of um James Callis. Um, obviously, you've teased before, like, 12 Monkeys veterans are popping up in um, in Season 3. You've said that. Obviously, we know of one, but we won't mention that one. Any more we should be expecting, or is that sort of, like, yeah, yeah. on it? Yeah, definitely. Okay. And I guess my next question builds onto that. We've spoken about legacy cameos and new character cameos before. That's something viewers should sort of, uh, sort of should be expecting a little bit here and there. 
uh, I would I would say it's not at all the realm of possibility. So that some familiar faces will be showing up that we haven't talked about. Very nice. One question back to Starship, by the way, because we spoke about the Enterprise. Oh, yeah, there, Moriarty. But... We weren't going to. We we weren't going to put. Oh Moriarty. yeah, Moriarty. Yeah, that's. We weren't going to put him in the trailer because because when you watch the season and he by the, the moment he appears, mm. if you don't know he's coming, it is it is mind blowing. <laughs> so like if you can imagine that you've forgotten it, yeah, it comes at a, at a, at a really great moment. So um, but when we got to that trailer, we kind of felt like. You know what we should we've talked about the next gen cast coming back i think we got to give them one other little show the fans that they're seen kind of moment you know i'm like all right let's let's let out moriarty and see what happens and who knew people were crazy because obviously we got law revealed and then boom moriarty's on screen it's like okay yeah. <laughs> Yeah. It's just jumping from one in the other, but no, that's, yeah. that's really it was, cool. It was heavy uh um teaser. Back to Starships though. Um we've got Enterprise F, we've got Titan, we spoke about Stargazer, Enterprise E comes up with time. We spoke about it briefly at the very start there when we by Wolf supposedly commanding it in various books and literature. Do we get anything on the Enterprise E a sovereign fans gonna be perhaps hinted or rewarded in the series? Can you tell us about one or not? You'll 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 get um by the by the time this the series is over you'll get a bit more of an answer to that mm. that's all to say awesome. <laughs> i think I, everyone's I, like seeing the enterprise f and they thought oh no it's definitely destroyed now like how did it die like, everyone's jumping already to like um, the immediate I love, I love the enterprise e I, I i do and i'm not saying you don't see or hear about the e um you'll get more of an answer but again it's that thing it's like there's a clear answer mm. um but the particulars of that answer uh, are are well we we have an idea of what they are are also open for someone to write a whole novel about it so you know it's that I look kind forward of to whoever writes that one me too because i want to talk to him <laughs> gotta... um as we go towards ending off this uh chat with you terry one thing i want to ask is obviously picard is very much obviously almost like a character study of jean luc in a way season one is you know it's got its own values season two has got its own values more like understanding the inner workings of it and confronting fear i guess you could say um season three what's that sort of exploring when it comes to picard specifically is anything you can tell us about that um it's a really good question that I need to prepare for because <laughs> um, um, what it deals with would be answering a whole lot of questions um, okay. and it, it, into, into the, into the plot. But I will say that it, it feels certainly like the right question for him when you, at this moment in his life okay. um, at, at the end Um when you're at the end you tend to look back at the beginning in different ways um and um yeah it, it you'll you'll understand soon but it's a lot happens to these characters they're all they have some pretty big arcs speaking about characters um season two touched on this picard is now synthetic in a synthetic body essentially um yeah. Is that touched on in season three? Like, is that something still explored, obviously? Because it's a big fact for the character. Yeah, there's... Yeah. Uh, uh, it, 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 is, it is relevant, but it's you're not going to see Picard plugging into any ships or... <laughs> it's not RTD you know, all of a sudden. <laughs> the way I think, look, I think the way Michael um, and Akiva in that first season told that story was pretty much... It's it, it's funny. I understand why some fans are having a real allergic reaction to it. It's just like it's not really him now. He's a fake now. I'm like, well, I, I get that because I would totally fall into that camp, uh, probably. However, I also think about it's a classic science fiction story about a, a consciousness that's uploaded into an AI body, and if it's exactly the same, it's essentially exactly the same. Uh, so um yes it is referenced sometimes as a joke um but um it's as far as our writing 
and this the, the creation of that character it's as if nothing's different about him okay. he, you know that it, he, he needs to feel like picard if he didn't then i think that would have that plot would have been would have been would you know that's all he would have been from there that moment on is experiencing an ai story I, nobody i don't think anybody wants that story i can imagine will Riker pulling his leg on a little bit like that's personally my imagination like maybe he's like having a joke or two with at the car's expense of like the you know synthetic body in a sense like I, that's uh, something i could personally imagine he it's funny he has a he has a, actually a, a a pretty great take on it when, okay. when he, and right it is Riker does reference it but he's not the one who really makes it you'll see but again, it, it, it's a small moment, although not also not small. I, uh, now I, it, it's late. <laughs> We're gonna it, circles here. Yeah. So finally, a couple of quick fire questions, um, particularly on okay. ranks. George LaForge, Commodore, yes or no? Commodore. Mr. Wolf, Captain. Captain, but Captain in rank. Captain in rank. Okay. Um, Riker, is he a captain or admiral? I'm more confused originally, like where he stands right now. He is a captain. Perfect. Seven nine yeah. commander. Commander. Michelle heard Raffi. Is she still in Starfleet, or is she temporarily out of it? She's back in it in season two. Is <laughs> she left again? Gotta wait and see. Oh, we see. Um, and who else we got? Um, Deanna Troy. Rank or no rank? Uh, counselor. Very nice. Um, in Starfleet when when needed. Perfect. So she'd still have commander. Yes. Uh, I believe that is. Uh, no. Pips I on her. I can't remember. Of that, she does get pips though. Okay, because I, I, she's commander in TNG in the movies. I remember, but I can't. I, I don't think, know if we see it in the trailer. I, I think so. I, I remember there was a whole day about that. There was a whole episode about that, one, wasn't there? Where it's, it takes for like oh. commander's course or something. I'm amazed what? I remember this still. <laughs> No, well, I mean, it, it, any time a question comes up like that, because eventually mm. one of needs, it becomes a whole day of everybody emailing everybody. <laughs> well, what you this? well, according to this, it's this, blah, blah, blah. And eventually, you know, you got to make a choice. So finally, one word from you to describe Picard season three. One word only. Epic. Perfect. That's going to be my answer as well. Terry, it's been a pleasure talking to you on Trek Central. I am sure we'll have you back very soon, hopefully, as we get closer to Picard Season 3. And you know we're going to have you on after Season 3 to talk about all the amazing decisions you and the team have made. I, would, I, I, hope, you, I hope you like it. Thanks so much.